the fact that I am doing the best I can and then I go get deliverance, they told me they never see people get through the amount of deliverance that I got through. And you know why? That's because I didn't come in in bondage to a sin where, you know, I'm intentionally sinning every day in an area and seeking deliverance for it. You know, if you come in in that state, then yeah, they're probably going to have to spend the entire time warring against one door that's open. But I have been actively warring and walking as repentantly as I can by the grace of God and away from Satan and you know what I showed up at that place and they just blasted stuff out of me I was getting delivered like that because this stuff had to go it had no legal balance I've, I'm, I have a repentant heart it had to go it wasn't this this battle you know and yeah they were already weakened I would like to interject because there is some contention over if a Christian can house a demon I don't think there's much argument that a Christian can surely be oppressed by a demon. But either way, let's put aside our doctrinal differences and learn what can be learned here. Because regardless, if these demons are oppressing from the outside or within, this is something that we all can be affected by. I think the best way to describe a Christian is as a spiritual honeycomb, and each comb can either contain light or darkness. This was a revelation given to one of our brothers in Christ whose ministry is a deliverance ministry, and it does make sense to me. But regardless, let's continue. These demons were already weakened, and I just had this to just polish me up, polish me up, polish my heart, get my heart covered in the blood of Christ, protected by the Holy Spirit, you know. Not that it wasn't before, but the Lord did a huge work. I know he repaired my spiritual armor. I'm talking at a million miles a minute because I'm so excited right now. I'm so excited. People, humble yourselves. Oh, I want to express this to you how good I feel. This is amazing. People, we have been given, we have been given such amazing tools in the body of Christ that few people realize, realize or utilize. Healing and deliverance. Who does that anymore? It's so rare to see in the church. And this is the foundation of the gospel. Love is the foundation of the gospel. But you know what? It manifests in people getting freedom and people getting healing. The spiritual freedom and the physical freedom is what God's all about. That's what love is. Of course, it's being a servant as well. That's so important. We have to be servants. We have to serve each other. We have to talk to each other lovingly. We have to be encouraging. But part of love is freedom. Part of love is freedom. It is for freedom that Christ came. Stand firm. That's what my shirt says. Galatians 5.1. Galatians 5.1. Look it up. Look it up. So take your freedom. And part of that is humbling yourself. And I'll say this too. It was extremely, extremely beneficial being able to confidently discern the voice of God through this deliverance because they could go about it in a way hey is the door to this open ask the lord i'd ask the lord he'd say if it was open or not okay it's open what is leaving it open i could ask the lord he would tell me you know they they'd ask me okay once once i got to the root of something will you give this up to the lord yes so i would give it up to the lord I'd ask the lord what he'll replace it with i'd ask the lord what he'd replace it with he'd tell me it's invaluable knowing his voice all right, people, I think you get the point. I love you so much. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And uh, may the Spirit of God be with you, guiding you. If you don't hear His voice yet, fear not. But your first priority should be learning how to do it. And a lot of it, honestly, is being willing to take action. I love you all so much. Have a great day. Thank you for watching this. Please contact me if you need further explanation or help in your walk or prayer for healing, deliverance, whatever it may be. God bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray that, pray that he seal you in the Holy Spirit and that the Lord breathe on you and that he breathe on anything in you that is of him. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you for watching. God loves you with the perfect love of a perfect father. We are called to be God's children, quick to follow in faith. I want to encourage you into your Bible today. I want to encourage you to be open to fasting. 
all kinds of fasting. I want to encourage you to declare Psalm 91 over a friend or your family today. And I want to encourage you to seek God's still soft voice, that voice of perfect love for your next step now, right now.